makes meters. This car makes meters. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Rich Reviews. And you join us on the M25 on the way to Millbrook Proving Ground to test drive the Ferrari 296. Today's video is sponsored by Rich Reviews. Rich Reviews now provides services to support our viewers in purchasing their own dream supercar. Our services currently include pre-purchase inspection, support calls and collection video to document you collecting your own dream supercar. More information in the description below. Hope you enjoy the video guys. So let me explain a little bit more. There's a batch of test drives that have been planned for various different dealerships for the T96 at Millbrook Proving Ground. The test drive consists of a few hours or a period of time actually driving the car on the road and then the following day, um, so this is across two days, the following day is driving the car on the Millbrook Proving Ground test track. So it's going to be a pretty cool event. So I get to drive the T96 actually on the road and on the Proving Ground on the Millbrook racetrack. Now the Millbrook racetrack is, is often used for testing prototypes so maybe there'll be some prototypes around there maybe they won't maybe we'll be lucky I'm hoping we can catch some of it on camera now these things are usually quite closed down especially the Millbrook proving ground because of prototypes being driven around the track uh, but we'll do our absolute best and the big big bonus of this is that this is all covered off by Dick Lovitz which is absolutely fantastic so thank you again to Dick Lovett really appreciate being being asked along for this event and we're staying at a hotel in Bedfordshire called the Luton Hoo Hotel now this is a very luxurious five-star hotel so we're very lucky to be to be given this privilege we'll show you around the hotel and we'll show you around the room to give you an appreciation of the sort of luxury that this hotel provides and hopefully we'll be able to show you some of the driving on the roads and on the track i doubt very much on the track let's hope we can show you some driving on the road if nothing else hopefully we can show you around the 296s out there at the event we're currently on the m25 we've got about another 20 21 miles to go yet um thankfully the m25 is going at a fair old pace but then we are sort of mid-afternoon so we're just arriving now at the luton who hotel Looks pretty cool so far, nice driveway, nice long driveway leading up to the premises, which means that the hotel should be fairly quiet and away from the main road. In case any of you have wondered, by the way, yes, we're bringing you above to this event. This has now done 139,000 miles on the original clutch. <clears throat> what a hero this car is. And yeah, we had that hiccup where we had the valves hit the, the um, where we had the piston where we had the valves hit the pistons but as you as I went through in the previous video check that video below if you haven't watched it already um, it was just one of those circumstances the event that caused that um, that that uh, catastrophic failure you can just see now the hotel between the trees looks pretty awesome I must admit I've stayed at some beautiful hotels in my life but nothing this grand in North London maybe I'm being disingenuous to North London there Remember guys, I used to live in West London in Perivale. I was born in Perivale. So you can see here now, it looks pretty awesome. Fantastic hotel. Ours is probably the most, ours is, pro, ours is most probably the plebish, the plebiest car in the whole car park, but it is what it is. It does the mileage. There's no point in putting all that mileage on the 458. So that's it guys, we've arrived at the Luton Hoo Hotel. First of all, we've got to check in, so we're registered, and then we'll be going out on the road drive section of the, of the event very shortly afterwards. Quite different, yeah, one age, yeah. Wait for the kicks in of the, of the car. It locks when you don't touch the steering wheel or you don't touch this part here, the locks. But as soon as you touch it, it is a touch screen capacity. You need to go, you see, yeah. You can change the gears to one manual, I put it in the manual. Run, run, run.
red light. Long one, go. Yeah. You can catch it up. <laughs> makes meters. This car makes meters. pace you can carry coming into corners yeah. and coming out of corners. Okay. Hello sir, what can I do you for? Welcome to the Luton Hoo Hotel. So this is our room. Now we're not in the main complex, so we're not in the main main complex of the Luton Hill Hotel. We're round to the side, which is where this Ferrari event is being held. So our food, the areas where we're eating um, and the area where we're staying is all around this side. So it's hard to say you, you move to the left hand side of where the main Luton Hoo frontage is and where the main Luton Hoo Hotel is. You move quite round to the side and they've got another section to the hotel, which is where we are here. We've got a lov lovely room. Initially it was a double bed, so we managed to get them to convert it into a twin. It was a twinable room, so that was no problem for them. They brought housekeeping in and they converted the room over, so really cool. It just took them five minutes to do that. As you can see, it's, uh, it's about as big as my lounge. <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's a lovely room. It's got some French doors there that looks out onto where the other people's cars are parked. Um, got our friends, Testrosa there, yellow Testrosa that you'll have seen on JM's uh, channel, JM on Cars channel. It's, uh, it's a really nice hotel, really, really pleasant. People are really nice, got checked in with no problems whatsoever. And at the end of the day, you know, I come from a working class upbringing, so this is all really nice, you know, and I've, yeah, I've grafted my ass off, run a couple of companies, yada, yada, yada. But, you know, I, I, I still think and, and, and still very respectful of being offered something like this for free, you know, it just, it's not normal for people to come from a working class background. So I really appreciate it. So thanks again, Dick Lovett. You know, we're gonna really enjoy this weekend. Gonna have a great time in the 296 and we'll try and bring you along the journey as much as we can. Some things in the air I can't feel it everywhere Every colour seems to bloom And there's light in every room Now that you're looking up I can see it in your eyes That lately it's been tough But now the sun is rising And we're new people Let's be new people There's summer Don't let me down, down, down Don't let me down, down, down I wanna be up, up, up So high Cause I've been down So today we've done the road event with the 296. Following that, we went and had an evening meal, um, lovely evening meal at the Luton Hoo. To give you some feedback with regards to thoughts um, on the 296 on the road, I mean, what can you say about the car? The performance is exhilarating, it's phenomenal. Um, you could say it's not far off an electric, and being a hybrid, it's not there obviously with regards to electric, with regards to torque and acceleration, but it's pretty near, it's pretty near, you know, not so much as you, you wouldn't really miss it. And for a hybrid, it's exceptional. And of course, for a Ferrari, it's exceptional. Sounds fantastic as well. But one of the things that really surprised me, that really caught me out, was the braking capability. The braking on this car is phenomenal. When you brake, if you're braking aggressively, then the rear wing comes up and you get a lot of additional downforce on the rear wing, on the rear of the car. That makes a hell of a difference. If you brake really hard, the car comes to a stop very quickly. So you've got all that performance and you've definitely got the braking capability as well. Now the car redlines at 8,500. When you're driving it, I mean the acceleration is out of this world. It, it gets there very quickly. One of the things that I noted was that I actually hit the red line a couple of times before I could pull another gear. We waited too much. Look at the red lights. No one, no. Yeah. Because it was redlining so quickly, it was accelerating so fast. That is pretty impressive. Once you get used to it, obviously you can, you can pull another gear and it's fine. You hit it with, before the red line. And when you're driving this car, your oral senses are really attacked. 
you've got the thrill of the acceleration, you've got the thrill of the sound, and you've got that braking capability. It covers it all, really. It's quick to turn in as well, but it's a Ferrari, so I'd expect it to be that. If I was comparing it with the 458, I'd say it's a little bit sharper to turn in than the 458, but not massively different, um, which is a good thing, because you don't want it too fast. Uh, we're, we're taking it on the track tomorrow. You can't really tell too much by driving on the road. Obviously, you've got to keep to speed limits, etc., etc. Um, but first impressions, exceptionally capable car. And we'll get it on the track tomorrow at Millbrook and we'll see what it's like there. And we're able to really push it on the track tomorrow. So that's going to be really interesting. Um, hopefully be able to provide some coverage um, around the track area, but we won't be able to get any coverage on the track because it's proving ground for a lot of prototypes. And we know there were some prototypes around there um, today, I believe. So uh, it's, it's very unlikely that we're able to get any, any footage on the track at all tomorrow, but hopefully we can get some footage at the track. So yeah, um, all in all, fantastic car on the road. You'll join us for a summary of the track event. I'm sure it's gonna be exceptional and very capable. You'll join us after driving the car at Millbrook. So you join us the day after the Millbrook event when we were driving the car around the track. We're doing the ubiquitous drive up to get a coffee. What else do you do in a 458 or in a supercar? And I'm going to give you my thoughts on, on how the second day went at Millbrook and my thoughts on the 296 overall. So on Sunday, we drove out to the Millbrook Proving Ground. Now the Millbrook Proving Ground is where a lot of manufacturers, a lot of high-end car manufacturers take their prototypes to be proven, hence why it's called the Milbert Proving Ground. It's actually a subsection or, it's, a, or it's, a, it's actually a configured in the manner of different types of track sections. So you have a one mile straight, um, you have what's called the hill section, which is an aggressive um, hills, as, you, as, you, as the name suggests, and turns section. So a bit like a very aggressive, very, very small racetrack. Um, and then also they had configured like a slalom with, with uh, a slalom cone section, a very small slalom cone section. Now when we arrived there at Millbrook, we registered, etc. And then following that, our Italian instructor took us out in the car. So they took us around all these different sections. They went to the mile section, did a launch and did a normal, normal acceleration for a mile. Then they took us to the hill section and drove us around the hill section and then did the cone section, etc. In effect, it would seem that the instructor's approach was to give some instruction to tell you how you should drive this, these different sections of the track, but also to impress you, of course, in the capabilities of the car. So the first section, you know, the acceleration on the mile, we went to the mile section first of all, and acceleration up to 150, 160 miles an hour. It was just absolutely incredible. I mean, the thing's bloody ballistic. Um, it was absolutely awesome. And then when we went from there, we went up to the to the we went up to the hill section, which is like the mini racetrack. And oh my effing god, that car is super impressive. I was absolutely astonished how quickly it changed its position, um, the acceleration. The road holding was absolutely incredible. It's just a phenomenal car. It changes direction on a coin, you know, on the coin toss. It's just fantastic. The braking, you know, was absolutely phenomenal as well. I mean, if I was gonna bring out three different high level points about the car that were astronomical, I would say performance, agility, and braking those three elements the car was absolutely supreme at it was a phenomenal time <coughs> there's no doubt that the instructor really demonstrated the capability of the car and it really gave me an impression that no matter what I do in that car I'm not going to be able to push it anywhere near the levels that the instructor could and even then he told me he was pushing it to like about 80% he wasn't pushing it to his maximum so there's no way I was gonna I was gonna default the car. There's, there's no way I was gonna ups, unsettle the car unless I did something really stupid. 
so it gave me confidence that I can really go for it in the car. So the 296 I was driving was the, was the car with the Assetto Furiano pack. Um, it had standard chuck absorber setup or rather the race setup. When I say standard, it didn't have the Magna ride configuration, so it, it wasn't configured by the Manatino. It was the, the suspension was pre-configured and was preset as a race tune setup or a sport setup. On the road, I found the suspension was fine. No problems whatsoever. Some people say it's too harsh. I found it was fine. On the track, it was absolutely astonishing. Fantastic, cap capable car. I cannot wax lyrically enough about how capable this car was, how capable the 296 was around the track. So when I was actually driving the car, I went up to, first of all, went up to the mile section, um, did, a, did a launch in the car up to 155, I think it was, 155 miles an hour. Absolutely astonishing. And the braking, you don't, you know, the, the regenerative braking, when you brake, it's regenerating the batteries. So that adds in the, the, the additional retardation for the car. And also, when um, as aggressive braking as well, you've got a rear spoiler that comes up, which adds an additional amount of braking as well, which adds the loads of downforce onto the car and really adds a lot of into the, in, it adds a lot with regards to the retardation of the car. To say I enjoyed driving the 296 around the Milbert track is a massive understatement. I had a phenomenal time; it was absolutely great. And also managed to get Jacob out in the car as well. One of the one of the instructors took Jacob out as well. Um, uh, one of the instructors called Jorge kindly took Jacob out for a 20 minute drive around the hill section as well. So Jacob got to realise what the capability of the car as well. So I mean that was just awesome. Because you know, I could be explaining to Jacob about how fantastic the car was but he's only going to hear it third hand. So he actually got to go out in the car as well and experience that sort of speed and agility in the car. Just fantastic. So yeah, to sum up both days. The Saturday was great to take the car out on the road. I thought I was experiencing the performance of the car when I accelerated. Oh, it wasn't really. I mean, that car shone on the track. It's an absolutely astonishingly capable car. Just phenomenal. It, it seemed to bend the laws of physics around the track. <laughs> Probably that's because I don't do much track driving and I'm just not, I wasn't prepared really to the capability of modern, car, modern cars, especially modern Ferraris. But uh, it was absolutely fantastic. It was a fantastic event. Really, really enjoyed it. And can't thank Dick Lovett enough for the invitation, especially for the, for the capability for Jacob to go on the track as well, for one of the instructors to take Jacob round. It was an absolutely great experience. And staying at the Luton Hu Hotel as well was a phenomenal experience in itself. So, yeah, we had a really, really great time. Um, really enjoyed it. And uh, definitely memories that we'll keep for a very long time, if not forever. For those that don't know, the Luton Hu Hotel is very famous for a lot of films being made there. Films such as For Weddings and the Funeral and the Peter Sellers Pink Panther series, or one of the Pink Panther series, the film called Shot in the Dark. The Milbert Racetrack, of course, is very famous for the section um, filmed for the film Casino Royale, where Daniel Craig comes over the breast of the hill. That's from the actual hill section from the Milbert track. Um, he comes over the brow of the hill in his Aston Martin DBS and his girlfriend is, is um, in the middle of the road and he has to avoid her and then rolls the car. So those, both those areas, the Luton Hu Hotel and the Millbrook Proving Ground are very famous for, for uh, filming. So pretty cool to be able to visit those areas just for that, just for those reasons as well. So closing out my thoughts on driving the 296. The car is absolutely awesome, fantastic car really enjoyed the event the car itself is extremely capable if you make a purchase of buying the 296 you're never going to regret it it's an awesome car and that just proved it going on that event it's quite clear why they do those events you can get an appreciation of what the car's like on the on the road but to see it go around the track and to gain an appreciation of its full capabilities just absolutely awesome it'll make you want to go and sign up on the dotted line to buy one uh, and i've no doubt quite a few people probably did after the event as well but yeah, so to finish off, awesome event. Thank you very much again to Dick Lovitz. Really appreciated the invite. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, give it a thumbs up. As usual, great content to come in the future. Thanks a lot for watching guys, and we'll catch you in the next video.